Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to read a CSV file in data frame from Azure Blob Storage. So we will need the uh, first of all, uh, we will go to the Azure Blob Storage and uh, then uh, we can create actually new blob storage and all those kind of things. So let's go ahead and create uh, so you would know how exactly it works. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, storage account. So blob and uh, storage account right there. And uh, that's my storage account. I have uh, already a couple of them, but I'm going to create a new one for you. So it will help. So let's create a new one uh, with quickly and uh, we can put in any resource group. So here is our resource group. Uh, and uh, then uh, here is my subscription. Let's provide uh, the story name. So we will say tech brothers and uh, say data break uh, that's it. So that's uh, all I will call is in uh, East US region and uh, uh, let uh, every, everything as is uh, like standard and everything so we don't uh, make any other changes uh, so we are going to go ahead and create this uh, and create this storage uh, so now it's initializing uh, and submitting the deployment and finally it should be created very quickly so if we go back to the home uh, or it's going to show us right there once uh, the deployment is done okay our resource is ready and uh, now you can see right here this is tech brother db that's our storage account and now we need to go to the uh, here in the left side we have a data storage we will go to the data storage and uh, we have containers so containers are just like folders so we are going to go ahead and create a new container i'm going to call this container input so that's where i will put my files so sometimes we do input and uh, move the data from input to the output that's why i mostly use this sometimes you can call it source or uh, you know something like that whatever you want to do now in the input folder we can upload the files so if i will go ahead and uh, upload and uh, here i already have created the file and uh, downloaded the uh, let me see where is my file so i'm gonna get the customer data csv file so i'm gonna drag it here and uh, then uh, i'm gonna upload uh, once uh, the file is uploaded you are gonna see right there so this is csv file that's uh, uploaded uh, now you can see we are in the container and uh, that's where our file is we can click on the file and then uh, we can go to the edit and here we will see the columns and other data we have. I have 10 rows total and there is a header row that has ID, first name, last name, address, salary and age. So that's good. Uh, now we are all fine here. I can close this tab here and uh, now we can start working. So we go to the code here and once we are in the code, it will say like, hey, let's declare some variable because what you want to do, you want to have a very clean code because you are going to use this in multiple places. So I created this variable storage account name and uh, I was testing this code. So I had Tech Brothers blob storage, you know, another uh, storage account that I was using. But as we have created new storage, so I'm going to go back to the home and uh, this is the one we are using, right? So it is a storage account and we just created a minute, a couple of minutes ago. So I can click right here and now I can simply double click here, copy and go back here and update. So because the uh, data brick would uh, need uh, to know where exactly uh, is our file and uh, the storage account tells us uh, in the Azure that's where container and file will exist. Now container name if you remember we don't have uh, uh, we go to the data storage and containers and uh, I have input container so when I was testing I had the output container so input now we provided the input container name here now we need SS, uh, SAS token. So what is that? A shared access signature provided secure uh, delegate, delegated access to the resources in your service ac uh, storage account. So if you need to access uh, the file uh, and uh, you need the permissions. Uh, so with the SAS token, it will give us that permission. Uh, from the uh, Spark, we will be able to read the data from the Azure Blob Storage. So we can do that either we can just do for the file or we can create on the entire uh, full container. So I'm going to go on the container. Maybe we will uh, uh, go ahead and uh, create more files and like a JSON files and all that. And uh, I don't want to repeat the same steps for you. So uh, we will uh, just uh, use the same. So I'm going to go ahead and here and say generate SAS. So once we do that, it is asking us, okay, uh, signature will be is the URI that grants uh, restricted access to Azure bl uh, storage container. Yes. And uh, now for how long? Let's say I want to just have this permission valid for one year. So maybe from uh, 
2025 i will say 2026 so for whole year this token will work once this get expired then your uh, notebook start failing because uh, you do, you have only provided this token for one year and the, that's the validity of this token now we can generate the sas token and here is my blob sas token so i can copy right there now once i copy there i can go ahead and paste it right there i think i did was uh, supposed to do the second one uh, blob ss token uh, let me see no the uh, the one which started with sp okay not with the uh, with the this uh, https uh, so use this one okay so now we provide uh, this token right here and we are good now we have the uh, storage account we have the container we have the access now by sas token now what we need to do in the data breaker we have to uh, use this uh, uh, line of code here so file path so wasbs uh, and then container name storage name at the name blob.core.windows.net and here is the csv file name you will provide so that that will be complete uh, file path okay what is wasbs it's a windows azure blob storage service protocol in enables secure access to the azure blob storage in the databrick or uh, spark so this is by providing this one this path now we have the entire path to our customer data csv that we have uploaded into the our uh, input uh, um, container now and uh, we already we have provided input container and blob storage uh, variables here so it's going to replace this entire uh, uh, url with those values now we configure the spark to use the sas token for authentication so this line of code spark.config uh, cunf dot set so we are saying fs dot dot sas then we provide the container name we provide the storage name and then we use this uh, token variable here so after the comma so you see right there that's where these three variables are used a lot so that's why i put in the variables instead of pasting it here and making the code ugly now what is next next is our the main step there we need to read the csv file into the data frame and here is a df so i gave the name data frame df and i said spark dot read format csv so we know that our file is a comma delimited file and uh, here is the uh, options and we say that header is equal to true that means that our file does have header so read that as a header and then uh, we are saying options uh, in first schema true so that means uh, uh, automatically detect uh, the uh, column data types uh, so that will uh, it will do and tell us if we want to see the print schema we'll be able to see that as well and finally i'm saying load uh, the file path remember the file path we build so this is uh, the file path we have built so this is a variable i'm using it here um, and uh, that will uh, read the file from here and uh, then read uh, the first row as the header and it is a csv file and then it's gonna go ahead and uh, show us uh, the data from that uh, uh, data frame so we load that data into data frame and then we will be able to see now we will go ahead and execute and uh, start and attach my cluster uh, got terminated because i have 20 minutes uh, of uh, inactivity so once it's a uh, start then uh, i will show you the output okay our uh, cluster is ready now and uh, now it is executing uh, almost executing it looks like uh, it is still waiting for uh, it should be working on it right now and uh, it should show us the output uh, once it's run okay great now it is running right now submitted to the spark jobs and uh, here is our output so you can see that we have id first name last name address uh, and salary and finally we have age as well so this is great uh, we have uh, read our csv file that was sitting in the storage account inside the container input uh, and uh, we have read into the data frame and then uh, from the data frame uh, we have shown uh, the data now if i want to see the as I remember we have already used the option in first schema that means uh, read the schema or detect the schema and uh, we want to see that as well uh, how that is working so i'm going to use the uh, um, 
df dot print schema so that print schema function is going to show us the schema it has read so let's run again and now we see the schema so here is the starting with the root we have id first name last name address salary age and now you can see that id is integer null label true and uh, it uh, actually null label true for everything because we haven't defined the schema so if you want to see how to define the schema i have created a video where you have uh, you can define the schema first uh, and then use it uh, accordingly now but we are just reading the schema from the file itself now this uh, uh, first name is string as well uh, last name string and then uh, it read the salary as integer and age as integer as well so that's great uh, depending on the data looks like it work uh, just fine now this is how you will read uh, the file uh, from the uh, blob storage into the data frame in uh, uh, PySpark. what i will do in the next video i'm going to go ahead and create the same thing but uh, i will have my input for file as json and uh, then we will have parquet file and all that so that we are going to create some scenarios here and uh, please go ahead and watch my other videos uh, that i have created in the list and i will see you guys in the next video